I've been practicing for over 12 years. I was born and raised in Missoula. This is where I want to practice. This is my community. And I want to be there to help the people I grew up with. I began my legal career in the United States Marine Corps. And I moved to Missoula, Montana and began practicing. And I just couldn't imagine a better place to live. What inspired me to become an attorney is I really have a passion for people, especially helping people. What we do here at Holloway and Hulling is we represent people that are in a very difficult time of their life. And we're here to make sure that their rights are protected and they get what they deserve. State for a fantastic season. Obviously, uh, they're an experienced group, a uh, team that we have a lot of respect for, and uh, you know you can't say enough, you know, good things about Dylan Jones and the career that he's had there. Uh, so, you know, we knew coming in that uh, you know we have our hands full. I thought the first half got a little bit money for us, and uh, you know we weren't able to to hit our stride uh, the way we had hoped to, but got into the halftime uh, locker room and we're able to make some adjustments, kind of calm down, get, get, uh, get our wits about us, and then once a few shots start falling in the second half, we're able to uh, make, make a run. Uh, Greg Rockhodge from MTN Sports. Brian, I wanted to ask you about the stretch in the second half. At one point, you guys made 14 consecutive field goals, and um, I know you made like 10 second half three-pointers, so what was just happening in that stretch to where you guys everything you put up was going in yeah you know we, we put in the work we try to prepare ourselves the best we can so when those moments and opportunities present themselves you know we're playing the percentages we didn't have a great first half offensively so the second half things started clicking the guys stepped up shot with confidence and shots went in parker cotton with the postman daily chronicle matt you were pretty uh, open a couple days ago saying that you know this team doesn't have a Dylan's Jones a Dylan Jones stopper, but you're you're guarding the entire Weaver State Wildcats. What kind of winning formula against them were you able to find again when faced with kind of a similar situation as last week? Well, you know, I, Dylan is such an unselfish player and, and does such a great job of, of making his teammates better. Uh, we just wanted to, to try to limit those those opportunities for him to play make and. and uh, and unlock some of those guys. I thought the first half he did a really good job of finding some creases in our defense and uh, hit, hitting a few guys for threes, but we were able to turn them over a little bit. Uh, I think four, six turnovers on the night. And, uh, you know, ultimately, like I said, it, it, it was going to be a team, you know, a team effort uh, defensively uh, to stop, you know, all of their pieces. And uh, I thought in the second half we were able to, to get our stops and then, you know, key our offensive run through, through that. Robert, as a senior, this has uh, got to be a special win for yourself. Obviously, your whole team, but as a senior, this probably might really hit your heart even better. Yes, sir. It's good. You know, it's a good team win. It was a good program. Any other questions? Sure. Rob, you said a couple days ago that it could potentially help your team that you get to face Weaver State again so soon because you don't have to lock in on anybody else in between. In what ways do you see that familiarity of seeing them a week ago come through today? Uh, just, you know, following our game plan, uh, you know, following what I want to say and being able to key in on what we thought would help us win. Robert, in that stretch when you guys made 14 field goals in a row, what, what in your mind was going so well for you guys? I just feel like, you know, we all clicked. You know, our coach talked about everyone being their best self. I feel like in that moment, you know, everyone was being their best self. Even our guys that were on the bench, you know, they were up talking for us, helping us out. So I think that you're one of the few guys that has experienced making a run and winning this tournament. When you put the sticker on the board, it seemed like you were pretty business-like. So what's your mindset moving forward, and how much does last year's experience help you? Uh, I mean, it helped a lot, you know, to understand the process and what's going on. I just feel like, you know, just one at a time, you know. You know, you can never really get, you know, too high. Like, on this one, you know, it was a great win. We're going to, you know, celebrate it, and then now we have to, you know, focus on the next day. Final, final question for the evening. Matt, I know you guys have a, another game, obviously, tomorrow, but um, what does a win like this mean for you and just what you're trying to accomplish with the program in your first season to, to make it to the semifinals? Um, you know, if, if anything, it, it uh, should give our guys confidence and proof of concept of what we were preaching all year. We've been, we've been pointing towards March, you know, from the beginning. Uh, we knew that in, in the long run, we were kind of starting. Uh, maybe a lap behind some other programs because of the transition phase we went through, and uh, we had to play catch up, you know, throughout the year and, and ride that roller coaster a little bit, learn from those valleys, and, and be prepared to play our best basketball in March. And ultimately, 
uh, you know, if you're playing your best basketball for, for, for this week, um, you can accomplish all the goals and dreams that we have for this program, the standard that's been set for this program. And so our guys have been pointing toward that. Uh, and, 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 and we're just, you know, one one game into that process. And so there's, there's no satisfaction at all other than, uh, you know, I'm happy that the guys have seen the, the, the proof in the pudding uh, and, and sticking together and, and continuing to grow through those, uh, you know, those valleys that we had earlier in the year. What is a jewelry design center? JDC is a family owned business with deep roots in Montana. Why Montana? Because this community made us, made us family, made us artisans, made us believe in love, made us hometown heroes because this community made us shine. Why Montana? Because Montana is home. Parker got the most hit of our Coach, Montana State was one of your first two big side points way back in December. Uh, in what way, if at all, can you tell that they were a different team when we faced them last week and if that continued in December? Well, I think a couple things. I think they they were learning a new system, some new players. Uh, probably weren't as comfortable as they are now, obviously. Uh, and then, you know, then I think the big key is they, they kind of found a player in Olmstead that, that can really make a difference. And it might have been somewhat by accident with some injuries, but it certainly makes a difference when you're trying to guard him, him being a lob threat and a uh, rim runner. And, and, uh, Guys, it's it's just it, it's college basketball right now. It's just, there's just not really any difference in the first team and the, the last place team. There just isn't much difference at all. The margins are razor thin. It really comes down to who, who steps up and makes some shots on a particular night. I mean, they're shooting the ball at an incredible clip over the last five or six games. Um, and uh, you know, credit to them. I mean, they 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 keep stepping up and making threes and putting in some tough spots, and they did that to us tonight. And, and uh, you know, I think they've just a team that's just kind of grown throughout the season. Hey, Coulter Duanas, ESPN Montana and Skyline Sports. Coach, you mentioned the razor-thin margins. Why do you think that is right now in college well, basketball? Well, you know, I've said this a lot uh, to media. I've said it to people in the, our community, our administration. With, with all of the COVID players, with the extra year of eligibility, there's just a mass number of good players out there. You know, I feel bad for the high school guys. They're not, they're, their recruitment's really small because everybody's getting transfers. And when you get transfers that are old and mature, and played in a lot of games, they're physical, um, there's just there's just a lot of good players at every level that everyone on, on, out there for people to, to snatch up. and. And um, so it's just, uh, you know, you'll see it in the NCAA tournament. I mean, last year in the NCAA tournament, you had San Diego State, FAU, and the Final Four. And it's, it'll probably be something similar to that this year. I mean, it's, there's just um, a lot of good players. You know, you got the European players coming over, Australia, and there's just, there's just uh, talent everywhere. And everybody's got quality players that are experienced and tough and old. And uh, that makes for great matchups. It's it's great for the fans. It's not so much for the coaches, but it's great for the fans. What well, they had a span where they hit like 14 straight field goals. I mean, yeah. what was going right for them, and what was challenging during that stretch for you guys? Well, I thought, you know, I, I we talked about our, our scheme. I mean, we it was the same scheme we incorporated in the first half. We started switching five ways, but you know, credit to them, they kept making threes over hands, and I thought a couple of times we even maybe got a piece of the ball, and they made it. I thought the only tipped one that Turner made, and um, you know, I think it's just them stepping up and making shots over hands that are contested, that are, that are hard shots, and, and uh, you know, we had some of those on our end, and we missed, and that was really, that's really the difference. At this point, it really comes down, it's kind of a make or miss game, there's not a lot of there's not as much strategy involved. You play these teams three times, and so it comes down to who's going to step up and make shots. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any Town Pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Right down the road. Pump it up. Oh, yeah. Coach, I just want to 
like to kind of ask, like, what was going on throughout the game? We were up by 12, and then they transitioned to that third, and they were shooting the ball tremendously in the second half. Um, what were your talks at halftime with that lead and then those timeouts throughout the game? Yeah, well, I mean, we just, you know, we kept saying we got, we got to limit their threes, we got to limit their attempts. Um, and some of those they made, you know, we were, they were deep and over hands and, and uh, you know, we kept talking about making sure that you're there on the catch. But then when we did go out, when they started making all those threes and then you get spread out and you chase them off and you get, they're playing so far out of the court because they're making them from, from deep. Then they're able to go by it and drive it and, and get to the rim. And so they had us in a bad way. And when they were shooting it like that, I mean, that's just what it is. The defense is hard. I thought the first half they did a great job, and, but you know I thought in the first half, to be honest, they had some of the same shots that they had in the second half, and uh, they just stepped up and made it. I still thought that most of them were, were hard shots, and, uh, and then we just I think at that point we got a little panicked on offense, maybe tried to go a little too fast, and uh, you know they were able to get some separation. Final question. Coach, it's a two-parter. If you guys have the opportunity, I mean, top 100 RPI. So will you keep playing if you have a, a tournament invite? And, and if if not, or if so, if that's Dylan Jones' last game at Weber State, just a, a comment on him. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. We haven't even talked about it yet. I, I, you know, I appreciate the question. But we haven't really even thought about it. Uh, you know, uh, Dylan came came to us four years ago. Uh, Could have went to a higher level. Uh, Came in as a, had some flaws in his game from a shooting perspective. Had some things he had to work on, controlling his emotions. He's so competitive. We've just seen him grow and develop in four years, and uh, you know he's a legacy player at Weber State. He could have left us. Could have went to. He transferred, obviously. Brian made some good NIL money and decided it was more important to be at Weber State. Could have went to the draft last year. Wanted to come back and, and move up in the draft. And, uh, you know, he's got, I'll tell you this, he's got great teammates too. And these guys have rallied around Blaze and Alex. These guys are terrific people. And, and uh, you know, I told Dylan, told these guys, you know, Dylan's helped, Dylan's helped these guys. He's, he's helped them see what a really good basketball player looks like and how he prepares. And these guys have helped Dylan because uh, throughout Dylan's uh, career, He's always had the support of his teammates, and Dylan gets a lot of attention, guys. It's not easy. We have NBA people coming in, you know, every practice. He's every interviews with Dylan. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff going on. These guys, they never, they never have any jealousy. They, they want what's best for him and our team. And so, you know, I think it's just a credit to, to Dylan and, and all of his teammates for, for hanging in there and, and helping him grow, helping our team. I'm practicing for over 12 years. I was born and raised in Missoula. This is where I want to practice. This is my community. And I want to be there to help the people I grew up with. I began my legal career in the United States Marine Corps. And I moved to Missoula, Montana and began practicing. And I just couldn't imagine a better place to live. What inspired me to become an attorney is I really have a passion for people, especially helping people. What we do here at Holloway and Hulling is we represent people that are in a very difficult time of their life. And we're here to make sure that their rights are protected and they get what they deserve.